Hold that. Stretch it out. Let's lighten it up a little bit, huh? Skydiving. What is that all about? For, your, for those of you that don't know, military skydiving. It's its own animal. If you guys who have been skydiving in the military and gone through those training circuits and those training cells know the military has the abilities to suck the fun out of everything, and that includes skydiving. Plus, you could die, so that adds a level of um, pucker factor, if you will. We're good. We'll break it down a little bit into military free fall and military static line. So, in SEAL training, you go through SEAL qualification training, and then you get into one of your final cells is the skydive cell. It's a month long of skydiving and you're doing it at a civilian site, but it's mandatory you start with static line, the automatic parachute where you jump out and it pulls the chute for you. A lot, everyone's seen that, you know, the guys jumping into D-Day and all that stuff. That's static line, it's called. That sucks. That's not cool at all. You fall like a sack of potatoes and you have very little control over your chute. You can barely steer the thing. And you're jumping with gear. You're jumping with a ruck strapped between your legs. And you're doing it about 1,500 feet a lot of the time. So you're not that high and the ground is very, very close. And when the ground is close, you don't have much room for error, error or something to go wrong where you can try to rectify the situation before you lawn, sp lawn dart into the ground. In SEAL qualification training, we start, we do a week of this static line. It's mandatory. It's an army regulation. Army runs jumping in the United States military. So it's required. Everybody goes through the static line course. You start with how to fall, feet, knees together, eyes to the horizon, and it's you don't want to anticipate you landing on the ground because people will try to land and you really just want to fall and then take the shock in your whole body and you you fall hard. It is not a light fall. And guys get hurt. When the, when the door opens up the back ramp, we were going out the back. Sometimes you can go out the side, but I mean, you're holding on to your chute, you're down and the ground is right there. And when it pulls, one, 1,000, two, 1,000, three, 1,000, you are hoping that chute pulls up because you have a reserve on your front and you, you're gonna need to pull that out and you don't have much time for that thing to come out and inflate. It's uh, interesting. And we do it in the United States, uh, this, the SEAL area, SEAL cell where we do the static line is right on the Mexican border. And guys can blow into Mexico, it's happened before. So that's the static line. And then you go into military free fall. Now, military free fall is a different animal. It's much more cool because you can land softly. You can flare those risers and kind of come in nice and soft. And it's crawl, walk, run, right? So they start you with some basic jumps. Now, the first time I ever jumped out of a plane, I, I've never been tandem. I've never been strapped to a guy and jumped like you see the civilians. That first of all, that's pretty lame. I would never want to be strapped to another dude like a like on a pregnant man suit. No thank you. So I was grateful that the first time I ever jumped was by myself and I packed my own chute for time. That's how it works. They teach you how to pack your chute and then you have 20 minutes to pack your chute and then go jump. So you're jumping so you know when you pull that thing, it's pots and pans don't come flying out the back and screaming into the ground. And that first jump is your heart's pounding. You're going, I always get nervous with it. Now there's guys with a ton, watching this potentially with a ton more experience. I have a, about a hundred jumps, 
about 80 something jumps, right? So that's not a ton. There's guys with thousands, you know, there's guys a lot more experienced than this, but I've jumped enough that I can tell you about what's stressful and what's not. That flight up, that when you're in that little plane and it's taken off and you know you're gonna be jumping out of it, is stressful. You know, you're breathing and my hands are sweaty. I don't, I don't like heights that much and you're really thinking about your life, you know, things do and can go wrong and have for some former teammates. You know, it's that part's really sad. The training is dangerous. So you gotta take it seriously. And the people and the and the cadre and everybody does take it seriously. It's no joke. You're not messing around. So we go out and we would jump and they practice stabilization at first. Now, skydiving is all about less is more. You know, you jump out, you get nice and wide. You, if your legs are bent, you're going to be going, going backwards. You're going to be backsliding. If your legs are too forward, you're going to be going forwards. And so you, if you're, you, if you jerky, you're going to be spinning and you have got to get stable to pull. If you're in a barrel roll, try to pull, that thing could come out, wrap around you. There's a lot of things that could go wrong when that chute comes out. So you have to be mindful and listen to the instruction that's put out. It's all about being stable. It's all about being chill. Less is more. And those inputs, any input you're doing is going to get more and more exaggerated the more and more weight you put on. You start off jumping slick. It's not too bad. But when you start strapping on kit, weapons, and you're on night vision when you are have a ruck between your legs. In the SEAL community, in special operations, you're jumping with chainsaws. You're jumping with quickie saws because you're jumping in. Skydiving is not the job. Skydiving is how you get to the job. It's a completely different mindset. And a lot of times when you're jumping in at night, you need to land together. You can't be spread out all over. You're, you have to think tactically. You're landing to start a patrol, to start an infill. So the skydives are insert, and then you start patrolling. That's your infill. And you're then they start stacking on some weight on you. You start learning how to do front flips, learn how to do back flips. And that's not to be cool. That's to learn how to stabilize yourself and be comfortable in the air. You learn how to track. You learn how to watch your altimeter. You're, then they put a GPS on you. Now you're putting oxygen mask. You're doing halo. You're at a, you know, up above a certain altitude, up to, you know, past 13,000 feet, you're going to need some oxygen. So all this stuff is stacking on you. And this takes, you know, about a month to get all this stuff cleared, at least in the SEAL training pipeline. It's cool. It's an amazing feeling when you have worked so hard and you jump out of that plane and you're like, I'm a Navy SEAL jumping out of an airplane with tactical kit on. And it is a very cool feeling which I'm grateful for. I'm grateful. I think everybody should experience what skydiving is like one time in their life. It's a really cool visual. You know, jumping out, we would see, I would see the sun setting over San Diego and the sun going down over the ocean. You look, you look east and you're going to see the desert. It's a cool moment. It's those poignant moments in life that make you reflect and grateful for all the hard work you put in to get to a certain point. And you can take that, that philosophy and that idea anywhere. You can all, anytime you work hard for something and you get to those magnificent moments, take note and remember them. They're important. Now, when you're landing, you have to be very cognizant of the wind. You have to land in the wind. When you land with, in, with the wind, you're going to eat shit because you want... The, it's like landing a plane, you know, you want to be towards the wind. It kind of gives you a little bit of that break. If you, if you have a strong wind behind you, man, there is some funny, funny things I've seen with guys just eating shit coming in hot. So skydiving is a very, very cool moment. And, you know, the static line, all that stuff, people have asked me why I didn't go to DCM rep. Why I didn't go to the parachute regiment. Man, because it's fucking static line, bro. I ain't trying to do static line, bro. It's For me, it's not very cool, bro. If you haven't done anything in the military and you want to go parachute, yeah, absolutely. But static line is fucking 
ass, bro. <laughs> you land like a sack of potatoes. Plus, I'm getting too old, man. Also, do see them rep. They're running hard over there, man. And I was coming in at 34, 30, 34 at boot camp in the Legion selection. And my my running would just slow down. My run, my running days were never were never great. And they were definitely behind me now, right? They said I was a little too big and a little too old. So that wasn't even really an option for me. So I decided to go another route. And I'm grateful for that. I was grateful for that guidance because guys get hurt over there. You know, DCM reps, no joke. All the respect to those guys because it's dangerous and they're jumping and things happen. You know, you're coming in hot on those with those parachutes and you land weird or whatever. Got a lot of broken legs, a lot of injured knees and everything else you can possibly imagine from jumping out of a plane with kit. And it's the gear that's the problem. You have... Before you land with a static line, you're, you're jettisoning your ruck that's strapped between your legs and it goes down and it hits first and then you're coming down on top of your bag or wherever you land. It could be in a bush or a tree. It's tough, man. So all the respect to Ducium Rep, it just wasn't for me. I, did, I had no interest in the parish. I'd already done static line and then I had already been f free fall and halo military halo qualified. So it was a, it would have been kind of a regress step for me. It made no, made no sense to do that. You know, they do have GCP over there, the group commando parachutes, and those guys will get to a higher level and they will do military free fall. And that'll take years, but it takes an additional contract. And those guys are legit over there. The selection pipeline for GCP is no joke. I don't even think I would pass. I'm always guaranteed I wouldn't pass just because of the running times. So that's just me being completely honest. Because as I said before, when I went to Group Commando Montaigne, well, I went to the Mountain Regiment to try for that. I was invited to screen and I failed one of the runs. I failed the run. You know, three years in, I was invited to screen and I failed that GCM entry run test. So the time was just too damn fast, man. And so that was my just note. You know, I did the video on failure. That was my sign. I was, I was good, man. I didn't feel broken hearted. I felt like I had done a lot in the military in the United States as a SEAL and then coming here and being a foreign French foreign legionnaire, you know, and pushing it all the way to maximum failure where it just, that was my answer. So that's how I took it. And I think that's a good way to take it for life in general is Push it to the limit to where you're hitting failure. Because if you're just not experiencing any failure, you're not pushing hard enough. And I don't mean failure doing dumb shit out in town, right? That's not failure. That's just fucking up. It's a big difference between failure and fucking up. You know, you could fail in a business and be working really hard. That's not fucking up. Unless you do something fucked up, and then it's fucking up. But you know the difference. When you're pushing hard and you're meeting those failure points and those friction points and you keep pushing and pushing and pushing and maybe it doesn't work out. And that's all good. You have a different path, a different destiny. And that's how you got to take it. And then push that path hard again. You have to push it to failure or else you're not trying. A little bit, a little bit on skydiving. We lighten it up a little bit. You know, sometimes we hit, hit those deeper principles and whatever, but... Skydiving, it's a fascinating, fascinating mode of insert in the United States military. And there's guys doing it at the tip of the spear who have a bazillion times more experience than me about doing some high speed shit. But just to kind of explain to you a little bit of what it's like, it's, it's a serious moment when the door opens and it's pitch black out and you're jumping out and you're in full kit. It's not comfortable. The military, as I said, sucks the fun out of everything. You're not having a giddy time. You're focused on the job. You need to think about your bearing, what, to, what direction you need to be going. You're, you need to be looking at your GPS. You need to be watching everybody around you. It's dangerous. They're opening chutes. You need to be looking below you, above you. You're on night vision. The ground, you can't even see. You're just looking at your altimeter. You got to know where, where the, sometimes you're jumping into an unknown drop zone, you know, and 
You don't know exactly what's there. You're gonna have to figure it out on the way in. You know, you know where the winds are generally, well, ideally, and you're jumping into an unknown DZ. That shit gets dangerous and you have got to focus. So that's the mindset going into a military free fall jump. It's a dangerous mode of insert. And that's why it's used very rarely. It's very, very high risk. But skydiving is pretty badass. It is a, it's pretty Gucci when you take a step back and look at what's really going on for those guys at the tip of the spear that do it. And when you do it, absolutely, you have got to be smart. Out of here.